Welcome back to Race for the White House. I'm David Gregory. Time now for the back half. Senators McCain and Obama are raising doubts about the $700 billion Wall Street bailout. That's the estimate. Both are now calling for greater oversight of the president's emergency plan. The stock market didn't react well either, plunging nearly 400 points today, wiping out Friday's gains. Joining me now for the latest is the managing editor of CNBC Business News and host of High Net Worth, Tyler Matheson. Tyler, good to have you here. Great to be with you, David. What didn't the market like about this? Well, I think uh, Thursday and Friday's uh, sort of uh, size of relief were replaced today by a focus on two things. One, the details in this $700 billion or more plan to uh, take bad debt off the books of uh, many of America's financial institutions. The details became key. And then there was fear, fear on exactly how those details were going to affect, number one, the economy, and number two, all of the companies that uh, will be involved in this bailout. So that even if on Friday, Friday, it seemed like, boy, the worst is behind us today. Uh, after a long weekend, people really focused on, well, maybe we really have to pay attention to the details and who the winners and losers will be. No surprise, this is topic A on the campaign trail. Senator McCain talking about the bailout today. Obviously, a rescue is absolutely called for. I respect and admire Secretary Paulson. But as far as I can tell, can tell, we're placing all those responsibilities in the hands of one person. I think we need to appoint an oversight board of the most respected people in America, such as uh, maybe Warren Buffett, who is an Obama supporter, Mitt Romney, and Mike Bloomberg, so that there can be some kind of oversight of, uh, instead of just putting all this responsibility on a person who may be gone in four months. Yeah, there seems to be on both sides of the aisle, Tyler, some concern about whether Hank Paulson, whether your Treasury Secretary, no matter who it is, should have the kind of authority to not be questioned, to be responsible for this money, and be solely responsible for the implementation of it. Well, absolutely. And that interview, I believe, from our John Harwood uh, yeah. last night, uh, indicating that uh, what is really at work on Capitol Hill, they're concerned about writing effectively a blank check and putting it in the hands of uh, one individual, who, by the way, was the former chairman of Goldman Sachs, one of the companies that stands to, uh, in some ways, benefit uh, from, uh, from this plan uh, as it uh, seems to be conceived right now. So there are many, many more calls for oversight, uh, for some uh, additional restrictions uh, to be worked into whatever package ultimately uh, uh, sort of uh, comes out of Capitol Hill and is signed by the president and a, and a suspicion, not suspicion, so much as a, a concern that uh, you don't want to put too much power uh, in one ha man's hands, even even if it's a guy as uh, capable as uh, just about everybody says uh, Hank Paulson is. Also joining me now, your colleague Aaron Burnett, anchor of CNBC Street Signs and Squawk on the Street program. She's down in Washington from New York. Aaron, good to see you. Good to see you, David, and nice to see you, Tyler. You bet. Same here. <laughs> Let, let's hear. Let's hear from uh, Barack Obama today, who, who talked about where there's a plan and where there are still details to be worked out today on this. I don't think it's completely a plan yet. What we have is a request, uh, a massive uh, amount of money that the Treasury would have discretion over. Uh, and we know that it's going to potentially take a while to work this thing out. We haven't seen all the details. I think that it has to be bold, uh, and uh, I am supportive of the need for quick action. Uh, but there's some principles that I think have to be included. Aaron, we, we talked a little bit with Tyler about what the response has been like in Washington. What about mm -hmm. on Wall Street, among these companies, what are they expecting out of a plan in whatever form it ultimately takes place in? Well, it's, it's an interesting question, and I think the thing that concerns them the most and is perhaps most important here is something Tyler was alluding to, which is it needs to be done quickly. And by definition, David, uh, the stuff that the banks are going to want to put in this big federal taxpayer-funded pool is going to be the most toxic, nasty stuff that there is. It's not going to be stuff the government can quickly turn around and make, a mo make money on. So it's important to know that a lot of the stuff that comes in is going to be pretty rotten, pretty bad mortgages, and, and the banks might need that help. Now, their biggest concern, though, to be honest, is something else Barack Obama was referring to there when he said, in a considered manner, and we need to think about the principles under which we're doing this, one of the biggest concerns for them might be uh, this, this cap on salaries, that if they participate, put their toxic debt in, they might have to, in return, accept caps on salaries. And it's not just Barack Obama who said that. John McCain told John Harwood yesterday, uh, as you know, that, hey, maybe these bank CEOs shouldn't be allowed to make more than the highest paid person in the federal government. And I believe that's $400,000. Let's listen to something that uh, 
Treasury Secretary Hank Paulson said on Charlie Rose um, earlier this year, I want to get the date, this was back in January where he talked about the economy, and let's put this in context. It was last August when a lot of the conf- concerns first popped up. This was August of 2007 when mm-hmm. concern about the subprime uh, crisis, uh, concerns about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac first materialized. This is Secretary Paulson back in January. The economy is uh, fundamentally uh, sound, long-term fundamentals are sound, structurally sound, uh, but the economy is slowing down. There's no doubt about it, but I do believe we're going to continue to grow. Aaron, where's the accountability for an administration that felt and used the word containment uh, uh, throughout this last year and a half almost when it came to, to this issue? They well, felt they had it contained. They, they sure did, and they were wrong along with everyone else. Uh, you know, one thing, though, that he's been technically a- correct in is that we haven't had a formal full-blown recession. Most people would say it feels like one, but he was right about that. Fundamentals long term, uh, you know, I talk to investors overseas and they still say, thank goodness this is happening in the United States. There's no other government in the world that could bail the world out of this crisis. Uh, those are pretty slim silver linings. I recognize that. But uh, yes, they missed it. But but so did everybody else who was supposedly smart and with it. So it's hard to point right. the if finger could, at them. If I could jump yeah, in, I think one yeah, of the things ahead, that, that may have been spooking uh, the equity markets, the stock mm-hmm. market today, was the sense that, uh, heck, the economy may really be slowing down now. And are we going mm-hmm. to avoid? Uh, a, a recession. A couple of the uh, investment banks, such as they have credibility left, uh, came in and downgraded uh, or said that uh, a couple of the big technology companies, Apple and Cisco, were going to make less money uh, because the economy globally was going to slow down. It's a little hard, I think, uh, this whole problem, David, that as you rightly point out, really started to uh, to build uh, last August. It's a little hard to fault policymakers too much uh, because right. I think this was so much greater than than any of us could have uh, anticipated, and the ripple effects uh, and the knock-ons so much greater than anyone could have anticipated. Who could have thought a long time ago that we'd be sitting where we are tonight? Right. Let me conclude with this question. Uh, both of you can take this on. What about helping the individuals? You know, talking about people on Maid Street, not just Wall Street. People who have, may have difficulty now making their mortgage payments because that's really the first rung of this ladder for people to be able to do that for these mortgage assets ultimately to, to grow in value. Right, Tyler? Well, I think that's right, and that's certainly uh, something that uh, lots of folks on Capitol Hill see as a real critical part of whatever package emerges, namely that there be some kind of relief for people facing foreclosure so that the a political perception is not that uh, Wall Street and the big banks are getting a bailout and help, uh, but that the but that the little guy who's sort of taken it in the knees on this is uh, at least getting some kind of assistance, too. Right. It's, it's a great point, Tyler. And David, to that point, it's already interesting how the, the plan has muted. The Treasury Secretary himself has said at first it was just to be mortgages and mortgage-related securities that we'd be put in this bad debt pool. And now other things might be included, like car loans and credit card loans, uh, which which is his view of trying to recognize that the problem may be spreading to a lot of other loans that regular Americans get. And the goal, of course, is to prevent interest rates from going up for any of them. All right. Aaron Burnett and Tyler Matheson, both uh, from CNBC, thank you both for being here. Thanks so much.